everybody who is listening on ACI and Gather. Thank you for tuning in. And I also want to thank, of course, anybody who is watching and listening on the live stream. We're so happy that you have decided to tune in. You can listen to the CMC Sunday Gathering from anywhere in the world uh, just by going to the live stream. And actually, we keep the live stream video uh, on YouTube for about two weeks after the gathering. So if you can't quite make the live stream live, you can watch the live stream later by going to our YouTube channel. And make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, then you get a little notice. And also I want to just thank anybody who might be watching the YouTube video that Reverend Kelly prepares. I want to give a shout out to Reverend Kelly. She's snowed in in, uh, in, in Anderson Island in uh, Puget Sound in Washington. She was out of power for quite a while, but uh, last I heard her, her power had been restored, so she was, she was happy about that. So uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we're in our uh, Love and Relationship Month. Uh, those of you who were here last week when I talked about loving yourself will understand what I'm going to say next. If you weren't, you won't get it, but I did fit into my skinny pants today. Yay. I, did. These are my, I have not fit into these pants now for a while, since probably about last October, then the holidays wow. came, and wow. the skinny pants hung in the closet. But I, I'm in the skinny pants today, so I'm, I'm grateful. I talked about that last week. So last week was uh, loving yourself, and uh, today I want to talk about loving others. And I do want to acknowledge that I have never had a very popular view about loving others. Uh, and uh, and it, I've also had a few points about this that a lot of people thought were impractical. But I have always tried to the best of my ability to live the principles that A Course in Miracles uh, gives to me. And A Course in Miracles talks about us not having special relationships. And you have to go to the Holy Spirit and ask for guidance about what that means for you. And I did, because I wanted to live the principles of A Course in Miracles. And so I have done that to the best of my ability. Uh, a Course in Miracles says to believe that special relationships with special love can offer you salvation is the belief that separation is salvation. So a lot of people get hung up on this particular quote because of, I think of the word salvation. So uh, you know salvation has two meanings. It has the more secular meaning and it has the more traditional Christian meaning. Uh, I mean they're related. But let's just take the secular meaning of the word salvation. It means preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. So if we think our special relationships are going to preserve us or somehow deliver us from harm or ruin or loss, we're wrong. And they're not going to do it. As a matter of fact, they're going to set it up. They're going to make it worse. They're going to make that happen. They're going to make harm, ruin, and loss happen. So we can't view people that way. Now, how do we view people? Well, that's between us and the Holy Spirit, but we have to be continually challenging our idea of specialness and asking for guidance and trusting that we are going to get that guidance. Uh, of course, a miracle says, you were at peace until you asked for special favor. And God did not give it, for the request was alien to him, and the peace of God was shattered. Oh. So, we wanted, of course, the miracle says that the problem all began because we wanted special favor from God, from our Creator, from divinity. We wanted somehow to be special. But God only saw us all as one and joined, and it was a, a totally alien idea. God did not give it because the request was alien to God. So God couldn't answer that. And so then we projected that rejection onto God, and everything was shattered. I mean, the whole peace and oneness was shattered, and we got what we currently got, which is the world, where we all seem to be broken up into all these different pieces. And now we're learning a new way to relate here. And of course, since the special favor from God thing was what started it all, we're all still obsessed with trying to find special ones to relate to so that we can feel special and we think we need these special ones and we think they're going to deliver us from harm, ruin, and loss. And all they do is manifest harm, ruin, and loss. 
And so we have to challenge that. That's what being a Course of Miracles student is for me. It's challenging that. So we're here to love others in a holy way, in a whole way, in a universal way, not in a special way. And we put the manifestation of that in the Holy Spirit's hands. This was in the reading that Reverend Rand read. It said, under the Holy Spirit's teaching, all relationships are seen as total commitments, yet they do not conflict with one another in any way. So one of the, the main things that comes up <clears throat> is when you think, well, i got to treat everybody the same, i got to feel about everybody the same, then how's that going to work? Then my relationships are all going to conflict. No, they won't. Because the relationships are under the Holy Spirit's guidance, and the Holy Spirit works out the details. And I remember when I really got that teaching, when like kind of like my third time through the text, it just changed everything. I was in conflict before about the Course's teaching on relationship, but when I got that, you know, this is all under the Holy Spirit's care, and if I'm following guidance, I can trust that whatever it is, it's all going to work out. It's all going to work out. It's great. And when I could do that, then I could really be more universal in my love and less special as I was guided. And then it continues, and this is a great line too, perfect faith in each one, each relationship, for its ability to satisfy you completely arises only from perfect faith in yourself. So all of our relationships can satisfy us. And we can have faith in that because we have faith in ourselves. That was last week's talk. We love ourselves. When we love ourselves and have faith in the love that is the truth about our being, then we can relate to others in that same faith and just trust that it's all being orchestrated by the Holy Spirit and it's all perfect and it's all going to work. And this is so important to the thought system of Course in Miracles. Actually, the thought system of Course in Miracles is salvation through relationships. And it says, uh, it is impossible to remember God in secret and alone, for remembering him means you are not alone and are willing to remember it. The lonely journey fails because it has excluded what it would find. So there is no real way, at least according to Course in Miracles, to find God and to reach our divinity and to realize our divinity off in a cave somewhere doing it all by ourselves. And we can all be in caves living right here in San Francisco in our own little domiciles, you know, thinking that, you know, we're a little universe unto our own. But it ain't gonna work. We're not gonna kind of realize our divinity and know the truth about ourselves because it's all about relationships. And it's all about relating to everyone as our equal brother and sister, not specially, but wholly, trusting that the Holy Spirit is going to guide us in every single instant. And we can trust that. It says, in the holy instant, we share our faith in God's Son because we recognize together that he is wholly worthy of it. And in our appreciation of his worth, we cannot doubt his holiness, and so we love him. When we're joined with the Holy Spirit and we're in that holy instant, we know our brother, our sister, the other is worth all of our love, our holy love, not special love, and we know their value. And we don't doubt it. And so we love them. And that's what it means to love others. Now, it's challenging to do this. Um, you know, I, I had a challenge this particular, this last week. Um, I, I talked about this uh, last week too. So, uh, you know, sometimes we're in relationship, and I, I was in an intimate relationship with a man for about five years, and months ago, he just decided he didn't want to be in a relationship with me anymore. He not, not only didn't want to be in an intimate relationship with me anymore, he didn't want to see me at all anymore. And it was, you know, that was a little challenging, and just like, uh, average people, there was that feeling of being rejected. You know, I had to deal with that and offer it up. And we finally had a chat after months and, you know, cleared the air a little bit and decided that we could be friends and we would try to be friends a little bit. So this week we had our first get together as friends, just to have a little lunch chat and went to the museum. 
Uh, went to the Legion of Honor. It was great. There's an amazing gem exhibit at the Legion of Honor, everybody. Anyway, you've never seen so much diamonds, rubies, sapphires, and emeralds all in one place. It's amazing. It's about all the gems that the Indian Maharajas wore. And it was the men who had all the gems on, not the women. So, uh, <laughs> it was, it's an, anyway, so we went there, and it was good. And I had a challenge. You know, I had a challenge feeling that he was wholly worthy of my universal love because I would look at him and then I'd remember the rejection. You know, I'd remember it. And it's like, so, like, my tendency was why not withdraw a little. You know, I was there. I, you know, just not talk that much, not share that much, just go through the motions, you know, see the exhibit, have lunch, and just let it be really superficial, which also felt weird because I wasn't used to relating to him like that. But that was, you know, it was, my mind was just all a jumble, and I really got that I wasn't seeing him as really worthy of that intimacy, that emotional intimacy, because of my perceived rejection of the intimate relationship that we had. And then I remembered this quote from A Course in Miracles. Look fairly at whatever makes you give each other only partial welcome, or would let you think that you are better off apart. See, so that was the, you know, the conversation. You know, it's like, this isn't fun. I don't need to do this anymore. You know, we'd, we'd be better off if we just didn't do this, you know, because it, it just brings up, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that was the little conversation. So that was what I have to look fairly at. Look fairly at what you have going on in your mind that tells you that you're only going to be partially open to this person. You're going to, you're going to be reserved. You're not going to really give your all. And so, I, you know, I was in the midst of all of that. I, I think it did pretty well. Actually, while we were together, it was after it was over that I was, the, the conversation really went on. Like, I don't mean, I don't want to do this again. You know, it was like that conversation. And I had to, you know, really look at that. And I had to ask for guidance about that. And just really ask for help about that. And I, you know, I got it. I got, you know, it's, it's, I'm just being me. I love me. I feel great about me basically, most of the time. And what I got was, Holy Spirit told me that a more intimate relationship with this person right now is not for my greatest good. It's not, not for my greatest good. And um, what was happening was perfect. And it was fine. And that was the message that I needed to get. And of course, the miracles is salvation through relationship. And that was my salvation in that Moment. Remember, salvation means the preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. So my salvation was just really understanding that the old form of the relationship with this gentleman wasn't going to serve me anymore. It was going to be a benefit for me not to be in that old form of relationship. And my ability to just rest in that truth would save me would save me from the harm, the ruin, or the loss. And then I could come back into the holiness of my interaction with myself, with him, with everybody, and, and, and just feel good about life and relationships and, and, and bless, just really bless that the Course was right. I was getting saved through my relationships and being able just to sit in whatever form they have, and, and be good about it. The Course says, your way will be different, not in purpose, but in means. A holy relationship is a means of saving time. One instant spent together restores the universe to both of you. And we're about salvation through relationships. That's what A Course in Miracles is about. And those relationships go through what they go through, and they shift and change. And our ability to stay there and to see the other person as worthy of our love and connection, regardless of the form and regardless of the form changing, because we've turned it over to the Holy Spirit and we're being guided and we trust that they're being guided. And that is great. And then I also got to think, I got the guidance, that, um, you know, it's been true my whole life, actually. I never leave anybody. I, just, I, I can't remember any relationship where I ever was the one that left. They always leave me. And uh, even in casual friendships, you know, like I never cut off a friendship. 
they, they cut me off for some reason. And uh, I've talked to a lot of therapists and counselors about this, and it's always kind of projected that, that that's a flaw that I have. I have some sort of flaw that I don't know when it's time to leave. And I've taken that on sometimes, you know, like, eh, I don't know my own best interests, I don't know it. But what I got this week, that is not a flaw, it's a blessing. It's just a real blessing. I don't, you know, things happen and I don't make a big deal out of them and I just go on from the truth of my perfection and their perfection and the trust that Holy Spirit is going to work it all out and that I don't really have to do anything. And the Course tells us that every step taken in the making, the maintaining, and the breaking off of the unholy relationship is a move toward further fragmentation and unreality. So I don't have to do anything to break up unholy relationships, even when they feel unholy. I just can trust that the Holy Spirit is taking care of the details. Now, obviously, this can go too far. People can be in abusive relationships and they have to split. You know, I understand all of that thinking, and maybe I haven't been in those kind of abusive relationships, so I, you know, I haven't had to be challenged by that. And I'm aware, as I said, that my view of relationships isn't the most popular, and, uh, and, and it seems like impractical to a lot of people's uh, viewpoint, because in a lot of people's views, you have to cut ties every once in a while. But I've never done, and I don't really do that. And, uh, and my life has worked out pretty good. So I would say that I am a demonstration of a different way to be. And, and if, you know, if, if you really think, for me, if I think like I'm going to be happier with a different person, how can that really be the truth if we're all one and joined? The Holy Spirit never uses substitutes. Where the ego perceives one person as a replacement for another, the Holy Spirit sees them joined and indivisible. He does not judge between them, knowing them as one. They're all the same. Everybody we relate to is an aspect of ourselves. They're, we're just relating to ourselves. We will project whatever part of ourselves onto the other person that we need to look at right at that moment. So exchanging one body for another, what difference is that going to make? It's only me. <laughs> it's only me, ultimately. And I also can affirm, because it's worked out in my life, the truth is, when it's time for the relationship to shift and change, they always do it. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> they always do it. It's great. I don't have to do it. They do. And um, it's great. And, um, you know, sometimes I have to deal with the feeling of rejection that comes in. But then I have to go within, and I do go within, and know that I'm never rejected. I always have the love of God, the love of self, the love from the divine, the love of the universe flowing through me. And new people are always springing forth in my life all the time. And sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, just watching the parade and, 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 and enjoying it. And watching the passing, you know, pavilions as they go, as they go by and just enjoying the celebration of it all. And I think that's what, for me, loving others is about. It's a wonderful, joyful celebration of myself and what the Holy Spirit has for me to learn. And I surrender into it, and, and I'm blessed by it, because that's my spiritual path. And that's what's worked for me in my life. So, thank you very much. Amen. Amen. <laughs>